In this video, we're going to look at analyzing the statement of cash flows. And to do this, we're going to use the Woolworths Group Limited cash flows for financial year 19 to begin with. And what we have here is a, the cash flow information uh, from rows three to rows nine. So we're just going to fill this in based on their 2019 report. All in millions, so 2948, two, negative 246 million in investing cash flows, and the financing cash flows is 2917. That leads to a total decrease, whoops, a total decrease in cash held of $215 million. The cash at the beginning of the period is 1.277. There's a $4 million exchange rate adjustment and leads to an ending cash balance of $1.066 million. There's a couple of additional specific cash flow line items that we require. They are dividends paid, which we can find in financing cash flows here of 1267 plus the 51. So 1267 plus 51. So there's $1.318 billion in dividends paid and payment for property, plant and equipment. We come up payments for property, plant and equipment and intangible assets. We're going to kind of just keep them all together for the moment. Uh, 1991. Well, there's some other information we need for the various ratios which we'll be looking at. These are operating revenue, current liabilities, non current liabilities. So we come up to the statement of financial position and we have current liabilities of 8620, 8620, and total liability, oh, sorry, total non current liabilities of 4202. come to the consolidated statement of profit or loss. And we have revenue from the sale of goods or services of 59984. 59984. And that gives us the information we need for financial year 2019. A lot of the analysis, so we don't really want to just limit ourselves to one year. So we want to build it out over a period of time. It helps with trend analysis and just helps identify what's going on. To do that, we're going to use 10 or so years for Woolworths. To save you having to sort of put all this in, a lot of uh, databases will actually have a lot of this information there so you can download it. Data analysis on the library website certainly does and you can go and just copy and paste it or download it and export it as you need, as needs be. So we have here 10 years worth of the same data. So this is still the, the 2019 information which we just put in, but we've extended it back to 2010. The first ratio that we're going to have a look at is the cash adequacy ratio. And this ratio expresses the cash flows from operating activities as a percentage of the capital expenditure plus dividends paid for the period. In other words, the ratio shows an entity's ability to reinvest in its operations and to make distributions to owners from its operating cash flows. And we see it defined down here as cash flow from operations divided by capex plus dividends paid. Now, capex we're going to define as payment for property, plant, and equipment. And to calculate this, we have cash flow from operations, which is up the top here, divided by, and I'm going to minus this because these are expressed in negative numbers, dividends plus capex gives us 0.92. And we'll extend that along. and we've now calculated it out. Looking at the ratio, it's normally less than one. Normally you'd like to see it one over a number of years, but you know, Woolworths is a, is a long running company. And so you know, we shouldn't express too much concern with this. The second ratio we're gonna have a look at is the cash flow ratio, and this deals with liquidity. The cash flow ratio compares the cash flows from operating activities with the current liabilities and is used to assess liquidity. And so we're just comparing CFO divided by current liabilities. So it equals cash flow from operations divided by current liabilities. And so just eyeballing it, and we'll have a look at the trend analysis in a little in a few moments' time, it ranges between about 0.3 and 0.4. 
So the cash flow from operations in the net is able to pay about 30 to 40% of their current liabilities. The debt coverage ratio links the cash flows from operating activities to long-term debt, uh, whereas in the cash flow ratio, we looked at more short-term aspects. What this ratio allows us to measure is the entity's ability to survive in the longer term and to remain solvent. And so we're taking the non-current liabilities and dividing it by cash flow from operations. So it's non-current liabilities divided by cash flow from operations. And that ranges in between upwards of about 2.2, 2.4. So from about 1.2 to 2.4. The cash flow to sales ratio uh, measures the relative amount of cash flow generated by each sales dollar. It's used to help it interpret the profitability of an entity. And so we take the cash flow from operations divided by net sales, and we're going to refer to operating revenue here as net sales. And so cash flow from operations divided by net sales. Take it all the way out. And you can see that it's pretty consistently between about 4% to 6%. So it's pretty much consistently 5% of all their net sales gets turned into about 5% of their sales turns into sort of cash flow from operations. Lastly, free cash flow, not so much a ratio, but just to get an idea of how much sort of cash they have available uh, to spend and, and to use. It's, it can be defined in slightly different ways. In this context, we're using cash flow from operations and taking away CapEx costs. And so what we have here is cash flow from operations minus, we'll have to minus the payment for property, plant and equipment because it's negative. And we end up with ranging from you know $942 million in financial year 2010 uh, to about $957 million in financial year 2019, and it fluctuates a little bit. Looking at trend analysis, and the importance of setting out a number of years helps us identify trends which are going on. Now, Certainly, just looking at the data in front of us, we could, if we spent some time doing it, pick out using just the numbers, but often there's an easier way to do this. And I'm just going to delete that for the moment. And that is just to have a look at it in visual form. So we're gonna have a look at just putting in some charts. These are just gonna be you know, on the fly charts just to see what's going on. And you can see Operating cash flow stays pretty consistent at $3 billion right the way through. Investing cash flows, there's always some investing going on, although there seems to be a lot less in financial year 2019. So they're spending money on property, plant, and equipment net, although it starts to drop a little bit in recent times, and it drops away a fair bit here. Financing cash flow, always negative, so they're always sort of there's net money going out from finance in relation to financing costs, pretty marginal in financial year 2011, around about the sort of 1.5, $1.3 billion for most of the time, but it, ex it extends out quite dramatically here in financial year 2019. And we don't have the information directly to hand as to what causes this, but this is where you'd have a look at the financials. So something it's been pretty consistent over this period of time but something has changed in financial year 2019 get rid of that now if we look at dividends paid and payment for property plant and equipment dividends paid increasing pretty consistently which is you know as a shareholder you'd like to see up to financial year 2015 and then drops away markedly to financial year 2017 and it's starting to increase again although Financial year 2020 will be interesting to see what happens. Payments for property, plant, and equipment have stayed pretty consistent over that period of time. So that change in terms of investing cash flows isn't seeming to be driven by their investment in property, plant, and equipment. Something else has happened um, in that latter year.
they seem to be pretty consistently spending about $2 billion on CapEx. Because the focus of this is on cash flows, we'll skip the information from other financial statements and we'll come down to the cash base ratio analysis. So now that we've got these set up, we can see you know, it's pretty consistent over time. Cash adequacy ranges around a little bit, has you know, improved and then fallen away. The debt coverage ratio, uh, solvency, you know, again, improving, it sort of bounced around a little bit over years and sort of fallen away a little bit towards 2019. The liquidity ratio, always in that range of between about 0.3 and 0.4, apart from here. But, you know, it seems to be improving. Cash flow to sales ratio profitability, apart from a dip in financial year 16, um, stayed pretty consistently around that 5%. And the free cash flow, 2016 dropped away to under $500 million, so to 374, um, which may link with what we're seeing here. Uh, liquidity, financial year 16. So it looks like something happened in financial year 16. They had a fair bit in 2014, 2015. It's come up and improved again. So at about that roughly, you know, 750, 750 million to a billion dollars over time with some kind of drops in 2016 and improvement in 2014. Again, what will happen in 2020 um, is yet to be seen, but I'm sure in a few months time as those results come out, we can get to see them too. And that's sort of one of the reasons why trend analysis can be quite useful is if you only take that one point at the end, you don't know whether that is a major outlier or that's just fairly consistent with what's going on. Um, so it's always useful to, to track back and it's in as much data as you have available uh, to see what's going on over the longer term.